Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's weekly live immigration attorney chat here at Immigration for Couples. I'm attorney Megan Pastrana, and our firm hosts this weekly live chat because we know how important it is for you to have clarity and support in your immigration journey. And so if you're new to our channel, welcome. We are very excited to have you here. If you're watching this on one of our other social media outlets like YouTube, I invite you on over to our Facebook page, Immigration for Couples. And like I said, this is a weekly live chat. I go over the topics and questions that we are receiving most frequently here at Immigration for Couples. And then at the end, if I have any questions from the audience, I am more than happy to go over those. And so if you're just now joining, uh, please go ahead and throw any questions you have in the comments and the chat. And I'm happy to go over those after I go over my topic that I have lined up here today. And I also invite you all to our free resource center at immigrationforcouples.com. And our free recent resource center is very robust. <laughs> we have a, a free downloadable relationship evidence guide. I know proving your relationship often seems like a very daunting and also invasive uh, task. And so the relationship evidence guide really dives into what it is that immigration is looking for. And we also have charts that give an overview of the different processes that are available to couples going through the immigration process. All right, so let's dive into the question that I have lined up here for today. So eligibility for naturalization. And what is naturalization? That's what I should back up and, and talk about that. If you're not already aware, uh, that naturalization is a process for an individual that can, to go from green card to U.S. citizenship. So the naturalization process, a lot of times will be referred to as N-400. That's the form that is filled out for the naturalization process for a person to become a U.S. citizen. And so I really want to dive into what are the eligibility requirements for naturalization? Who is eligible to go through this process to become a U.S. citizen? There are so many different statuses that a person can have as an immigrant. There are work permits. There are all kinds of different kinds of work permits. There's, there's student visas. There's so many different categories and types of immigration. And a lot of times what happens with citizenship in the green card is that a lot of people refer to them interchangeably as one thing, but they're actually two different statuses. So the green card also called lawful permanent residence, is a, a status that a person has that allows them to live and work in the U.S. So that's the actual green card. And then naturalization and U.S. citizenship, that is when you have a, a U.S. passport, like I mentioned earlier. So it's it's really this, that process. And these are the eligibility requirements to go from that green card to being able to have your, your U.S. passport. So the very first requirement for citizenship for naturalization is that you have to be at least 18 years old. There are there are different processes for children to, called a certificate of citizenship. Sometimes if a child already has a U.S. citizen parent or their U.S. citizen parent naturalized, they can still become a citizen. But that's a, a different process and a different topic. But I did want to mention it all the same. So that very first eligibility requirement, again, is that you have to be at least 18 years old. And then the second requirement is that you're a green card holder, that you have lawful permanent resident status. And you either have to have been a lawful permanent resident for three or five years. So those who have those individuals who've been married to a U.S. citizen for at least three years and have gone through that process, that that's usually relevant for our couples who've gone through an adjustment process or a fiance visa process to get their green card and they received their green card and they're still married to that U.S. citizen, then you can actually be eligible to file your green card at the three-year mark. For everyone else, it is five years. You have to have your green card for five years before you're eligible to file. So that's that difference between why some people get to file for their green card at the three-year mark and others at five. But either way, there is a period of time of either three or five years. You have to hold your green card before you can become eligible to naturalize. All right. And so the third requirement is physical presence. So as a lawful permanent resident, when you received your card, there were a whole bunch of instructions and requirements and rights and responsibilities with with that green card. One of them is that you have to be you have to maintain your physical presence in the U.S. The United States has to be your home. And so naturalization, they are looking at that. Uh, immigration is looking at that in the naturalization process as well. 
you as a green card holder, you are not able to take trips outside of the U.S. for more than six months. And as a green card holder, you need to be residing at least half of your time, living half of your time in the U.S. And so that is what immigration will look for in the naturalization process that you've been residing and living in the United States at least half the time. If you have not maintained your physical presence, you won't be eligible to file for your citizenship. Another requirement of uh, an eligibility requirement of the naturalization process is that it's, it's very unique for the naturalization process, but you have to have lived in the jurisdiction where you'll be filing your application for at least three months. So what does all that legal jargon mean? Living in the jurisdiction where you'll be filing is that you have to be living there three months in that state. So for example, I'll use Indiana for example. If, as long as you have been living in the state of Indiana for three months, then you'd be eligible to file your naturalization application and, and you would have that application completed at the Indianapolis field office. So that jurisdiction requirement, you have to be living there for three months. It's a very unique one. And I've uh, sadly, I've seen people who move to another state and city and they have been there for less than three months and then they file for naturalization and they find out, oops, I wasn't living there long enough and you have to start over. So be aware of that um, random and important requirement of the naturalization process. Another eligibility requirement for naturalization is that you are a person of good moral character. So what does that mean? That you have been filing your taxes every year and that you have not been convicted of, of certain serious criminal activity. And then the last requirement, eligibility requirement of naturalization is that you have to be able to complete a civics and English test. So there are a hundred questions that anyone going through the naturalization process has to study and an immigration officer will ask you questions during the interview. They will ask you up to 10 questions. And as soon as you get six questions right, then you've passed that civics test. You'll also have to write a sentence in English and read one sentence in English. And that is the other uh, eligibility requirement there or the final eligibility requirement for naturalization. So if you'd like to learn more about the naturalization process, I invite you on over to our free resource center at immigrationforcouples.com. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I hope that that gave you clarity on eligibility for naturalization. Take care until next time. Bye.